If you were to look on an ordnance survey map, you would notice the blue grid that overlays the map. There are regularly spaced vertical lines and regularly spaced horizontal lines. And these mark on the lines of latitude and longitude. When we're zoomed in to a small area of the Earth's surface, it forms a grid pattern. But what is to remember is that these lines continue off the top and bottom of the map, off the left and the right, and would extend all the way around the Earth. Which means if we were to consider what they look like on a global scale, they'd look very different. Here I have a model that shows the lines of longitude, the vertical lines, and latitude, the horizontal lines. Let's look at latitude. The zero point of latitude is the Earth's equator, this green line, and these lines represent different angles relative to that. For example, this line represents 30 degrees, and this line up here 60 degrees, and at the North Pole 90 degrees. What it means is the lines of latitude are angles subtended through the Earth. If we imagine and looking inside, if we drew from the surface of the Earth at the equator down to the centre of the Earth and then up to the pole, we have got one quarter of a circle there, 90 degrees. If we went to a point that was out here, then that might be 45 degrees. In the United Kingdom, we're at a latitude of about 52 degrees. And uh, if you were further up, it would get eventually up to 90 degrees at the North Pole. We are 52 degrees north. Places down here are described as being 45 degrees south, with the South Pole being at 90 degrees south. Some lines of latitude are more significant than others, and this is because of the Earth's axial tilt. The Earth's axis is tilted by 23.5 degrees, and as it orbits the Sun, six months of the year the Sun appears to be below the Southern Hemisphere, and the other six months of the year the Sun appears to be more directly above the Northern Hemisphere. On the extremes, on the summer solstices uh, of the Northern Hemisphere, we find the Sun beats directly down on the Tropic of Cancer, here marked by this ring on the armillary sphere. It's just a line of latitude, 23.5 degrees, the same as the Earth's tilt. Then on midwinter's day, the winter solstice for us Northern Hemisphere people, the summer solstice of the Southern Hemisphere, the sun beats directly down on the Tropic of Capricorn, this much lower ring down here at 23.5 degrees south. Of course, this armillary sphere, which really maps the sky, whereas this maps the Earth, it has two more rings to note. Now this one here at 66.5 degrees is the Arctic Circle, and at 66.5 degrees south, the Antarctic Circle. These two circles represent 90 degrees minus 23.5 degrees, and it is at these points here that uh, we see. Uh, very strange phenomena, such as uh, when the Earth is tilted backwards, this ring here is totally away from the Sun, meaning for the six months of the year, between the equinox in autumn and the equinox in spring, the North Pole receives no sunlight whatsoever. It is shaded from the Sun by the tilt of the Earth. And in that period of time, the Antarctic Circle receives 24-hour sunlight. Then, at the equinoxes, it switches over, with the Southern Hemisphere getting 24-hour-a-day darkness, and the Northern Arctic Circle having 24 hours of sunshine. Another way of measuring the latitude is to measure the angle of the position of the North Star. See, if I was at the North Pole, the North Star would be directly above my head at 90 degrees, like this. If I was at the equator, the North Star would be at the horizon at zero degrees. So what you can see 
is the angle between the North Star and the horizon will actually tell you your latitude. Here, in the middle of the United Kingdom, we're at a latitude of about 52.9 degrees. And so I would expect to take a sighting of the North Star about there. This, my Thermodolite, would enable me to look through the very small telescope there and sight the North Star, giving me my latitude. So long as I could take this wherever I was on Earth, I'd be able, from a sighting of the North Star, to be able to work out my latitude. But what if you can't see the North Star? It might be that you have to choose a different star, such as if you were sailing in the Southern Hemisphere, the North Star would not be visible at all. So what you would have to do is pick some other stars of known position in the sky and work backwards to find your latitude. You may also find that this is slightly cumbersome. It doesn't really allow you to look uh, very accurately. And so sailors invented this. This is the sextant. This is a device for measuring the angle between the horizon and a particular star. What happens is you look through this small little hole here and what you see is a mirrored section and a clear section. You get the horizon in one section lined up right across the middle and then you adjust, you adjust this second mirror up here until the star comes into view. And when the star comes into view with your horizon, then you've made this equal to the angle between the horizon and that star. The sextant allowed people across the world to work out their latitude. So how does a sextant work? Well, there's a little hole here for looking through, and that enables us to look at this thing here, which on one hand is a clear little window, and on the other side is a mirror. What we see in that mirror is a reflection of what is up here, another mirror. So what happens is we align the little window with the horizon, and what we try to get in the other mirror is a reflection of the object we're looking at. In this case, we're going to see if we can find the sun. So what you can see is we have our horizon through the left-hand window, and the sun is reflecting pretty much right in the middle of the mirror at the moment. So we've changed the angle of the reflected sun to be equal to that of the horizon. And what that enables us to do is compare the angle the sunlight is hitting that mirror, which is then reflecting into that mirror and coming to see us. And that only works when we have changed the angle of this mirror to match the difference between the angle of the sun and the horizon. And so we'll be able to read off down here exactly what angle the sun is above the horizon. The vertical lines on this globe are lines of longitude. The longitudinal lines run from the North Pole to the South Pole. And what they measure is how far around the world you are. On this globe, the lines of longitude are 30 degrees apart. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. All the way around to 180 degrees, which would be the anti-meridian on the other side. The zero point for this measurement system is the prime meridian, the line drawn in red. And if I was one line, two lines to the west of the prime meridian, I would be 60 degrees west. And in the same way, the same number of lines on the other side would put me 60 degrees east. As the Earth turns, and different meridians are turned underneath the sun, all having their noon at a different time. The ancient Greek Ptolemy first drew a map of the world, and his map started at the Canary Islands on the left, and all of the lines of longitude were drawn vertically down on that map from left to right. And over time, what happened is all of the major cities and ports around the world drew their own meridian lines, so that sailors sailing away from those places could measure the time difference between that place and where they were. The Greenwich meridian line, this line here, is the line that runs all the way around the world. It is universally accepted as the prime meridian against which all time is measured. To my left, we have the entire Western Hemisphere of the Earth, and to the east, 
the entire eastern hemisphere. This prime meridian line seen here extends from the North Pole all the way to the South Pole and there's an anti-meridium around the back. The whole thing makes up the great circle of longitude. Because the Earth rotates at about one degree every four minutes, you can use the time of local noon as compared to the noon here at Greenwich to determine your longitude. If your local noon is four minutes later, then you are west by one degree. So that is how you can determine your position on the Earth just by measuring the time. The time on board ship needed to be kept alongside the time at London. But this meant that a clock needed to be taken on board the ship. John Harrison solved the problem of taking a clock on board a ship with these, the Harrison chronometers. Through a series of early designs, he perfected the art of using a clock without a pendulum. Come and have a look at this one. The Harrison chronometer really changed everything. It didn't have a pendulum in it like this clock. Its timekeeping was based on a different mechanism. It meant that the toing and froing of the ship wouldn't interfere with the clock's ability to keep time. And so those clocks could be taken anywhere in the world, allowing mariners to know what the time was at Greenwich. Comparing this to local noon enabled them to work out their longitude. Having one of these enabled them to work out their latitude. So all sailors needed was a sextant and a Harrison chronometer and they were away, able to say where they were anywhere on planet Earth.